All right, boys and girls, we back for a afternoon uh, session here. I've been tinkering with the order flow setup, and I wanted to uh, present it here um, as a masterpiece, as a piece of art. And I've always been into art, and so I, probably why I like charts so much and reading graphs and whatnot, because uh, I get joy out of, like, the style and and the uh, patterns that develop and the way it looks uh, obviously it means a lot to me because I spend a lot of time doing it but I've been spending a long time trying to create a basically a chart setup like a tool that is how I see the market effectively like I wanted it as basic and as simple as possible to how to properly visualize so I could just look at it and uh, see what I want to see. But see, try to see into the market a little bit. Like if you could see every order, if you could see, um, you know, the impact of those orders, you could see the magnitude of those orders. Then you could have a little bit of an edge that can't really be quantified. It's kind of like an edge on, on the edge, essentially. I don't know. Anyways, uh, here is the next. Um, uh, iteration of the order flow setup that I've started and I'm probably going to roll with I mean like I've done a lot of different setups I've been testing them all out I just kind of throw them out on YouTube just to see you know what people think what people are trading and using and uh, you know if, if it's working for people that kind of stuff and uh, this has been uh, the like a revelation for me I mean I've always kind of known that order flow was going to be the thing but this was always the thing this was once I got this set up and started practicing with it I had an opportunity to this week since I, uh, I had vacation and so I definitely leveled up uh, my game here with this and so what I did what I changed was here is, is what you're looking at is a footprint chart on uh, Sierra charts and I have another video that shows how to, to essentially set up a footprint chart now it's not going to be this one I'll probably do a video how to set it up but what you're looking at here is the end of day move on Friday and I've been kind of racking my brain you know trying to go back and look at what did I what did I miss and why did I think the market was going to crash here because uh, if we go back to Friday you see that here let's just look at uh, ES was down here down at 3909 which I know is a big uh, support 3909 so it's like around this little zone here and had a support line there and I knew that there were buyers lurking here because I I'd, I'd seen it before uh, I saw the breakthrough out of 09 and so I just knew that this was this 1009 area was going to be a thing and so I saw the market drift down. So this is 15 minute footprints. I saw the market drifting down and I'm, I'm looking at the deltas. They're just smashing. Uh, they're just selling. I mean, this is it. 4,800, 1,000, 5,700, 1,500. So you had low, low, high, higher. And so I'm just looking at this coming down into this 30. And it's happening fast too. So I'm just going like, oh my gosh, we're just going to we're just cratering here we're gonna bust right through here and just you know there's 80 billion to sell and the rebalance and end of month and all this stuff so all these thoughts were going through my head as this was happening and I was watching uh, Tesla here let's go pull up Tesla here I was watching Tesla and Amazon next to each other because I was I was short here let's just put it here and we'll put Amazon here okay so I'm short Tesla here I'm looking at it right here and I'm hoping the 600 breaks and Amazon I'm going okay Amazon did break but it's still at the uh, pivot point here so they're both at like a lower pivot point coming into support Amazon even like a, a second leg down well actually they both were same pivot for both of them same number Tesla right here pre pre split is three thousand dollars a share Amazon three thousand dollars a share they're both coming down into some major support here and as this was happening, like around this this area here, this is Amazon tag here, Amazon and and where it tagged 600. I was thinking, oh my gosh, I know they're gonna rip this thing. They're gonna just, 
I know I'm getting baited here. I, I just had, I just smelt bait. And the reason I smelt bait here, because it was happening really slow. It was just real slow grind. And so, but I'm also watching ES too. And I mean, I'm seeing ES massive sellers coming into the support. So 3909, I had 3000, 3000. It's really 600, but it's 3000. I think of it as 3000. So you have Tesla and Amazon both coming down after massive moves down already. You really don't want to short that kind of thing in the first place. This is as a general rule. You want to kind of short here on bounces and as it's coming down, but you don't want to short, you don't want to short 600 is what I learned, but that's the idea. You don't want to short 3000. You don't want to short 3000 and you don't want to short in uh, this type of selling, which really wasn't that much of that much selling. And I'm looking at it here and I didn't have this syndicator here, but I just had this and uh, total volume, which I don't care about total volume anymore. Uh, it's useless, but I'm seeing the selling. You can see the red prints. This is just the imbalance for that particular level. Um, of sellers to buyers, aggressive sellers to aggressive buyers. So we're looking at sells, we're looking at sells, we're looking at sells. We have a point of control that keeps getting moved down. So you have one, two, three, four, you even had more than that. The start of it was right there off of the uh, 3934, which was another level I was watching. And I got those levels from uh, some order flow traders on Twitter, uh, TikTok, there's J Striz. Those are the two main ones. So I'm getting these levels and I'm just putting them on there because I don't know how they generate them. And I'm gonna figure it out, but I don't know yet. So I put them on there just trusting that they're levels and they are almost every single time. But I'm seeing the cell come down into a level that is important. It's an order flow pivot. And this would tell you whether it's gonna be higher or lower. But I'm seeing the cells and I'm, the problem that I have was, uh, I my bias was, I was playing for the big flush instead of the ripper. And even though my brain was telling me that the ripper was coming, because I I know not to short here, it's coming in. Both of these huge stocks are already way down, are coming into massive support. Is there enough, my question should have been, is there enough selling here to support the thesis that Amazon, Tesla, all the big all the big stocks s p 500 futures is there enough selling here to support a break of 39.09 and tesla 3000 and amazon 3000 that should have been my question but instead i'm playing for oh my gosh if these things break i'm gonna make so much money it's ridiculous if these supports break but the problem that i have here and i didn't really lose money on friday because i was playing with a little bit of profits that I had but so I was taking little small little lottos and that kind of thing and I had been short pretty much from here in like Tesla and Amazon uh, even Baidu so and then uh, that's another thing I bring that up because I was playing Baidu here which had a horrible day horrible two days so we're looking at a massive dump and a massive dump in a row but it's coming right I'm looking at this chart and it's coming right into a support zone and you know what I do I freaking try to buy puts here like an idiot. Why would you buy puts at a monthly pivot and a quarterly close? So you got Baidu here at massive support. They of course ripped it. And I saw this happen. This happened before these happened. So I'm looking at this and I'm going, holy smokes, they're destroying shorts in Baidu right now. So they're destroying shorts in Baidu. You got Amazon getting destroyed, but it hadn't moved up yet, but it started to. You could start seeing it happening here at 3,000. Tesla, they destroyed Tesla. Same thing started happening here as with Baidu. Let's put Baidu up here. But Baidu's move started at one o'clock and even earlier than that. They started bouncing this thing uh, back at 11 o'clock. See, Tesla's move didn't start for 45 minutes, 30 minutes later. Amazon's didn't start moving uh, till way later, till two o'clock, 3.45, two o'clock. So Tesla happened a little earlier, Amazon happened. So I'm watching these three in tandem, uh, hoping that they break, but I'm not considering that Baidu moved off support early, Amazon at 3K, Tesla at 3K uh, pre-split, and ES is at 3, 3.909. So my question now is, 
the, do all of this does all of this break and what 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 is my thesis here for that to break and so this was my problem coming into this particular end of day where I, I my brain my logic was telling me this was going to happen that they were going to rip it and you also had rumors thrown out there uh, follow some people on Twitter that are saying you know massive end of month rebalance you know 80 billion to sell when I saw that I instantly thought oh man they're messing with us they, can't, they ain't selling 80 billion now 80 billion did they was a there was a, a lot of selling in China names I know that there was like a family office that sold off like a billion dollars of like Baidu and Ababa and Tencent and Viacom and whatever but was that enough to really because this this kind of thing right here was going to crater the market if it gets under here if it gets under this 3909 if it's under the 3000s if Baidu comes back and craters again but Baidu was the tell for me when I started seeing Baidu run up and I saw these stocks kind of drifting into this major support I had a feeling that this kind of thing was going to happen but what did I do I was sitting there in puts I was sitting there in puts until it's too late I ended up buying like somewhere around here thinking that something like this was going to happen but I could have if I was watching this correctly and I'm seeing the Delta 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 negative 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 even here negative like wow they tried to bounce it back up through sold it off again once it came back through and I saw this little support right here and I see this mat this imbalance here start developing this should have been the tell they could not sell it through all this negative Delta they could not sell it and Baidu had already started ripping and shortly after you see this happen now I was on uh, I put a question out to some order flow an order flow trader on Twitter <clears throat> and he said this uh, could have been partly because of Vanna and put Delta unwinding it was op uh, options expiration um, so that that's very possible I'm looking into that to see if that's true and then I do have a sub who's talking about iceberg orders and I was trying and I was telling him I don't think they're relevant I think they're relevant uh, just not for this kind of thing but maybe they are maybe they are so when I said that I didn't think it but but maybe maybe this was partly iceberg orders as well because how can this negative Delta be so persistent all the way through and it's almost like it was saying, hey, short, short me, short me, short me, short me. And it still ripped somehow, even into all of that. Um, I, was it pretend selling? Like, I'm, I'm assuming to be able to trust these numbers that they're actual cells, aggressive cells. And if they're imbalanced to uh, the sell side, then the price should, should drop. So how did this happen to where they ripped it anyways, even, even into more negative delta people were still selling at each level higher even this huge candle was a huge sell so was that just a big iceberg order did they all package their uh, end of month rebalance orders into like one fund and say okay here's our orders just go ahead and execute this five minutes before market close on friday and it's just one big iceberg order so it doesn't show up on this uh, through the order flow here is that what happened here I don't know. Somebody explain it to me because uh, I've been trying to figure this out um, because I knew the move was coming and I just didn't see it. I did not see it here. And so I trusted this setup over my own instincts. So um, that's hopefully some lessons there for you guys. But uh, hopefully you like this. Like, subscribe, comment, and uh, we'll see you next time. Peace.